two-dimensional um, tools to create three-dimensional designs. And um, the products I sell are mainly base layer for girls. And so those are the things that you wear underneath your soccer uniform or basketball uniform. And I'm just going to hold up a couple of garments um, so you can get an idea of what they look like. Um, usually when I start with a design, I start with what I want. So that's like the consumer benefit. Um, I'll have a price point in mind. I'll have some performance of the fabric. And it's the same for girls and boys. You want to think about what children need. And so I'll pass these around so you can take a look. And the reason why I talk about starting with the end in mind is because um, you wanna, I'm always focused on solving a problem and my business is a social enterprise, which means it's doing good as well as um, making a profit. Um, so I just pass these around. That's a top and this is a bottom. And they're simple garments, but they have some complexity. And I know it could be embarrassing to talk about underwear. There are some other embarrassing things that I didn't <laughs> include. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, the thing about garment design is there are some, it's really old meets new. There are low tech things that you absolutely have to have, and then there are some new tech things. For old tech, hand drawing is so important because when we start designing something, we start with a drawing. And um, you don't have to be a good artist, but you have to be able to use geometry. So drawing something on paper is really important. And having a sense of visual spatial relationships, like if it has to be perpendicular, or uh, if, if it's a right angle, or if it's curved, and those kinds of things are really important. Um, so do, do you feel like that students should still be taught um, construction by hand, <coughs> even though they can learn it on the computer? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, there's so much that's tactile about gar the garment industry, um, especially with performance fabrics, because uh, they react differently when you sew them. So you don't know the stretch. And even for things like jeans and things, now they're full of lycra and other stretchy things, uh, stretch uh, components. And so when that happens, um, when, you, when you send it to the, back, to, the fabric, to the factory, it might perform differently than how you designed it on the so I think there's really no substitute for at least knowing the beginning, um, which is the basic of hand drawing. Um, and actually, I talk about that a little bit at the end. Okay. Um, um, and the garment industry is really populated by a lot of young people right now. Um, I'm pretty old to be starting a business like this. And I think um, what I hear from young people is they wish they had the drawing skills mm -hmm. because they didn't take time to develop them. They don't get taught so much anymore. Right, and because it was in the art department and those departments that weren't taught. Um, so these are just some of the technologies and I, I use mainly Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, I don't use AutoCAD and Maya a lot, and I didn't want to put them up because when you see them, if you go and you Google them, it's really a body. It is amazing how three-dimensional it is, and when you design garments like that, um, you're really looking for very, very tight fit. And um, as you can see from these, I'm just going to pull them up. Um, some aspects of what I make are a tight fit, but it, it's not... Um, like some of the things that the cats are looking for. Bottoms need a tight fit, but they're all light compression, they're not heavy compression. Um, so these are just some of the tools that I use when I'm just designing. And this is how it looks like. So if you're looking at this three-dimensional object, um, you have your, your front inside and out, and then you're gonna draw out your back inside and out. So that when you send your drawings to the factory, they have a visual of exactly what you're making. Um, so this is something the factory finds essential when they're programming the cutting or if they're using manual cutting and labor, um, then they need 
just even more. And even things like um, how the color will translate, it's very important to have every um, angle done. And you'll see on the bottom, we actually even have a side view right here, because you want to see how it's going to fit on the torso. Um, but then you, you always end up going back to old tech. Um, and it's so important because, I don't know if you can see the detail here, you go back to algebra and geometry for proportion, for proportion, for going from big to small sizes. Um, that is so important. And if you have a designer that wasn't good in math, these proportions are off. And the first sample or the first five samples that they make when they're doing a prototype will be wrong. And you'll be going through these old numbers by hand, figuring out the ratios. And so that really can get frustrating. So being very good on the computer is essential now, but the very best people, they are masters at this. Um, also, you can see from the symmetry part, um, especially for bottoms, being symmetric is really important. So, um, so geometry and algebra, they are like the keys to life and business. <laughs> because if it's wrong and you don't really understand it, um, it's very hard to fix. And even if you're on the computer, when you go to sew it, if the fabric has some performance or stretch, um, you're not gonna be able to judge that unless you can kind of work it out mathematically. Um, I would say the other really important thing about garment design is um, experience and common sense. Fabrics will perform differently when you sew them. So this could all be perfect. The computer drawings could be perfect. Everything could be right. And then you're gonna get to this to the factory and it won't perform. It will sew up differently. It will stretch. It will, you might use a trim that doesn't perform how you expect it. And so you need some experience and common sense to say how much can I change this? And then how is it going to affect the numbers? And then you plug those in, and then you're going back to the drawings, and that's going to alter your drawings a little bit. So it, it seems like a complicated process because there's so much old and new together, but actually it's really fast. And the factories, they make up samples in a day. They you ship these off. They download everything, and it's very quick. So that's what I do, and that's how I use two-dimensional design to solve problems for sports, for sportswear for girls. What Thanks. questions do you guys have? Mm -hmm. How long have you been like doing like garment design? Uh, about a year and a half. It's a relatively new business. So you, do you have a business background? Mm -hmm. Do you have an MBA? Mm -hmm. So MBA, if you don't know, means a master's in business, and it's a good idea to get an MBA if you want to do if you want if you want to develop your business sense. And that requires a lot of math. <laughs> I was just gonna say you. I was just thinking, should I say this? I think algebra and geometry are like the most important things that I use every day because even if you're doing a production flow where you do the process from the idea to the delivery of the finished product, product. All that flow is like geometry. It's the same kind of thinking, analytical thinking. And I think I rely on my algebra and geometry every day for, for work. And do you guys kind of, are you starting to understand that you can ask me in class, when am I going to have to use this one little detail that we're learning right now? I don't know. I can't tell you because I don't know what you're going to do. But what I can tell you is that you're learning, your brain is learning how to work a certain way with algebra, and it's learning how to work a certain way with geometry, and it's learning how to work a whole nother way when we put the algebra and geometry together. And so regardless of what kind of career you end up in, you are developing ways of thinking. And then you may not remember every formula you're taught. That's okay. You can always research formulas, but it's those thinking skills that you need to have. So that's always my answer when you say, when am I ever going to use this? I, I want to build on that a little bit. Please do. I, um, I think that you guys.
guys are learning to learn and then unlearn and relearn and and all those critical thinking skills and I think for business especially for my generation you know we didn't even have email we faxed and now we use Skype and you can work with a factory in China and be in real time all the time and I think if you have that mentality of being able to relearn um, you can stay current with business and be able to do all kinds of new things and honestly always have opportunity um, and if if things like going to do some new programs frighten you which you guys are so young I think that would never happen <laughs> then you're, if you're a little bit limited um, and the other thing I would say is actually algebra for pricing and your business you know like if I need to price say I want to change the fabric on this but I have to set a price point like I can't sell it for more than $31 you can back out if you can afford that fabric just by putting it on there, by doing the equation. And we do that all the time, and it's useful. So, any other questions? And you guys have to know, like, the people that put the equations in, they have to understand the algebra to know what equations to put into the computer to get the computer to make the correct calculations. So. Do you guys have any other any questions at all? Alright. Well, Thank I'm you. gonna wrap up with them a little bit yeah. before we go to lunch. Thank you so much. Delete this. Thank you. So welcome. Yay! Yay.